Hey everyone, welcome back to Ali Bakes. I'm Eliza Saw, and today I've got another cake video for you. I actually have not done a cake video since before the pandemic started. So today is the day we're returning back to decorated cakes. And if you want to see how I do it, then just keep on watching. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I do baking and food related videos every single week. So this is how you make a sloth nature themed red velvet cake. So to make this cake, the first thing I'm actually gonna do is make my decorations because I want my decorations to be set up and dried out and ready for the actual day of assembly. So I'm making this a few days in advance. And what I'm gonna do is grab some gray and white fondant and I'm just going to kind of mold it into a rough body shape and I want my sloth to be like hugging onto this cake. I'm gonna attach the face and the limbs and everything just by scoring the body parts and attaching with a little bit of corn syrup and corn syrup will act a little bit like a glue but try not to add too much or else it'll become a sticky mess and for the face i'm going to attach a little white circle of fondant after the rough body shape is ready i'm going to brush a little bit of brown food coloring onto the cheeks i'm going to make the face using some very thinly who is rolling the garbage I'm gonna make the face by taking, oh my gosh, there's a train. And rolling it into a very, very thin. You know what? Close my damn window. Okay. To make the face, I'm going to take some thinly rolled gray fondant. I'm just gonna add some eyes, a mouth, and a little nose with the two little nostrils. I'm also gonna make this a three-toed sloth, <laughs> so I'm going to take some white fondant, roll it into some claw shapes, attach it by poking three holes in the arms and legs, and then attaching it with a little bit of corn syrup. And there you have it, that's our sloth done. And oh, I forgot to mention, I also made a very small little flower, it's like a little, little cute little decoration, like a hat. Now we're gonna actually make the cake. And to make this red velvet cake, you're going to need some soft butter, sugar, eggs, vanilla extract, for the dry ingredients, all purpose flour, or cake flour if you have cake flour, cocoa powder, baking soda, salt. And for the white ingredients, milk, vinegar, food coloring, but to put it together, I'm just going to cream my butter and my sugar on medium to high speed until it's nice and fluffy, and then I'm gonna add my room temperature eggs and then add that until it becomes pale and fluffy as well. In a separate bowl, we're going to sift and whisk our dry ingredients, so the flour, the baking soda, salt, and cocoa powder, and then we're gonna set that aside. And then I'm gonna add this to the butter mixture going from dry ingredients, wet ingredients. And then finishing with dry and this just contributes to a nice and fluffy cake if you want to get all the details and the specific how to's on how to make a creamed cake like this um, I do have a series called baking basics that I made a little while ago and I go pretty in-depth into every single step that you do so if you're confused about a certain part you can check that out and let me know it might be helpful to you moving on so once the cake batter comes together we're going to put it into some prepared five inch tins and what i did to prepare this was just brush it with some butter and line it with parchment paper at the bottom and so i'm going to divide my batter between this and then i'm going to pop it into the oven for about 40 to 50 minutes or until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean While the cake is baking, we can get started on our other cake components. And by other cake components, I mean some sugar syrup, which is equal parts sugar and water boiled together until it is nicely dissolved. And you'll wanna let that cool before brushing it onto your cake. So now we're going to make our cream cheese frosting. I do have a video on this as well. It's just a little bit old. <laughs> Every time I watch my old videos, I'm like, ooh. Anyways, to make this cream cheese frosting, you're going to need some soft room temperature butter, some 
soft room temperature well not not entirely room temperature cream cheese but you want to keep it out of the fridge for like 30 to an, 30 minutes to an hour depending on how cold it is in your house you just want to make sure that it's not straight from the fridge because this is what contributes to clumpage so the secret to an amazing cream cheese frosting is to make sure that your butter and your cream cheese are super creamed and smooth and lump free and then the thing that pulls it all together and whips it up into a nice and fluffy icing is the icing sugar so here are my red velvet cakes out of the oven nice and cooled and they smell delicious i'm just going to trim my cakes off the top using a serrated knife and then cut it in half to get four layers of cake in total then to assemble this cake we're going to take a layer of red velvet cake brush it with simple syrup fill it with some cream cheese frosting and then repeat and repeat and then once you get to the top we're just going to do a rough crumb coat I like to do red velvet cakes naked because I find that cream cheese frosting isn't the best at keeping a structural hold so if you put on too much it will definitely have your cake sliding all over the place also it's very sweet so I find that naked red velvet cakes are Perfect. I like to do a top little swirl of cream cheese frosting as well, so I'm gonna do that by taking my offset spatula and just pulling it outwards as it spins. And just make sure the edges are nice and straight, and then you can set it aside. So to make the vines, I'm going to take some extra cream cheese frosting and color it. I'm gonna use some dark black brown for the vines. I'm gonna use some green brown for the leaves, another shade of green, which is more bright. And then we're also going to have a little bit of purple for the flowers. So now I'm gonna take some of the black brown, put it into a sandwich bag or a piping bag and just cut off a small tip. And then we're going to just pipe it all over the place. Make sure it's a little swirly, it's going around in directions. You wanna have it like hanging from the top and as well as on the side and just go all willy nilly. It's gonna look a little crazy at first, but that's okay. Once we go in with the leaves, it'll look way better. So now I'm gonna go in with my brown green. Use a leaf tip or make your own leaf tip by cutting your piping bag like this and just pipe all along the vines wherever you think it looks nice. Now I'm gonna go in with my brighter green and just do the same, making sure to go along the top of the cake as well. And now we can add our flowers. So I first wanted to use a French tip and after doing this, I found that it was just a little too much. They were a little too big. They look like flower buds. I wasn't going for flower buds, I was going for flowers. So I scraped it off of my cake and I redid it with a star tip. And I believe I used a number one or two or zero. I will get back to you. I just piped little dollops. And that is how you make the cake. I love this design. So to finish it off, I'm adding a little happy birthday plaque and a number plaque. And if you wanna see how to do those, leave a comment below. I have been making cakes for many, many years now, but I'm always willing to share. So let me know if you liked that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of this cake. Leave a comment below and I'll see you all next week. Bye.